My background is a combination of finance and HR. My initial profession was finance. Then when I realized there was a gap in HR, I joined human resource. So I'm also a human resource practitioner. And uh, this has helped me in the community because if you can think finance, if you can think figures, and you can think people, then when you bring them together, it is able to help me in the community. I have put up a foundation that is able to look at the people because initially my desire was to start with economic empowerment, but I've realized that the issues and the health challenges are quite huge. In fact, when, uh, when, we started, when I started the Festula camp, I felt that I should go and at least bring some of the patients from their houses. And I went to pick one particular lady. And of course, she packed her small bags, and then she said her money was lost. So we gave her time. We told her, can you get this money? So she went around. Everybody was looking, including, you know, her house was two-roomed. One, one room is the kitchen, and it is also the bedroom. So the fireplace is just by the bed. So we even checked under the ashes. We couldn't find anything. So eventually, we told her, go and look for it yourself. Then she went and came back later, and then she was holding something in her hand. And then she said, Daddy, I found my money. So I got interested. I said, what is this, what is this body that she has found? When she opened her fingers, it was 20 bob. The level of poverty mm -hmm. is so high that if we don't, as women, if we don't come up and try to raise these people, they are going to suffer. This is somebody who's had first of all their life. They've been abandoned by the family. They live alone. So it is really sad. And I'm hoping that through the foundation, I'll be able to at least touch, if not all, even two lives, so that they can say they've moved from one point to the other. That sight of the 20 bob still haunts me. Right. 20 bob, even if you lost 20 bob, you'd not even bother, you'd not even know. No. But for that woman, that 20 shillings was so critical. And what even made me so sad is that as you are leaving, you know now when you're leaving home, of course now you tell people to take care of your properties. And the only property she was talking about was one chicken. She said, please tie my chicken. Let it not roam around and be eaten by the eagles. Oh. So the poverty is what makes us come together as women to find out how can we uplift them. Because as she says, we are in a patriarchal society. And the women at times are left behind. And if we don't teach them how to take care of themselves, how to uplift themselves, then we'll be judged harshly. That's why despite the fact that she is not on a salary, I'm not on a salary, our offices are not constitutional, we are not paid anything, we don't have any gov government allocation from any quarter, but we go out as first ladies just to talk to the different partners to find out how they can assist us because we realize that uh, the governors also have limited funding and ours is to help the governors because we are not politicians. We are in this because of marriage. So that's why we engage partners like she has, men she has mentioned. We've, uh, we, we have AMREF helping us. We've had Empower Clinics. Those are the clinics that look at uh, cervical cancer, which is also harming a lot the, of the women. Even as I was going out looking for the fistula patients, quite a number, about 4% turned out to be more than uh, above stage three cervical cancer patients. Mm. So it, it is really that something that uh, it, is, it is a calling that we have to do. So we do it based on how we can connect. That's why we meet, we meet, we meet together because if I speak alone, I'll not be able even to talk to these people. But when we speak together as the association, which is a registered organization, then we are able to attract more people to come and assist the governors to meet some of the desires within the community.